Bono faces long recovery after bike crash. Matteo Bono, the lamprey rider? What was he even doing in New York? Oh, the U2 singer. Well, frankly, that's what he gets for remaking Christmas is all around. Christmas is all around me. All around and me. so the feeling grows. What? It was Do They Know It's Christmas? Is that a that's a real song? Why would they remake that? The joke has already been made. And honestly, why is this on Velo News? I mean, yeah, sure, it's in most red, but how much ad revenue did that get you? $500? When Bono became the uninvited party guest on my iPhone, it was worth a cool 100 mil. <laughs> Nah, uh, but I forgive Vela News, if for no other reason than they had Kaylee Fretz in Taiwan for a few weeks, taking pictures of the supremely efficient factories that allow me to participate in this notoriously expensive sport for a mere $1,200 transaction every five or six years. And I mean, yeah, that doesn't count recurring costs like tubes and chains and license fees, but still, while outside isn't free, it can definitely be quite the bargain. And while overspending has been very much in vogue for the past decade or so, we may have even reached peak Rafa. Longtime company executive Slate Olson just announced he'd be making the jump to Specialized, thus reducing the number of smart-ass graphics I have to make by half. And Bicycling's Bill Strickland has asked if enthusiasm is the new suffering, prompting some rattling off of buzzwords and links to jerseys that cost $100 instead of $250, which is still pretty ex- Also, Bill, enthusiasm? The kids call it stoke. Moving on to cyclocross, where conditions at the Havre Super Prestige were so terrible they made Sven Nice look like a small child. But in all seriousness, the Kralon AA drink rider was not dominant, but still rode a smart race to take third, clipping Telnet Fidea's Tom Meuse. Not the finish the latter rider would have hoped for, having spent most of the final laps off the front with the Sunweb Napoleon Games duo of Klaus van Tornout and Kevin Powells, who finished first and second, respectively. On the women's side, Enertherm BKCP's Sana Kant continued her month of dominance, taking advantage of the somewhat inexplicable decision by Telnet's Nikki Harris to wait up for the Belgian champion multiple times earlier in the race. This weekend may bring an end to Kant's hot streak, as both Katie Compton and Mariana Voss are on the start list for the World Cup at Cockside. Then again, Kant already has the sweet victory celebration with Voss in the background shot from Lille. Maybe she's looking for one with Compton to complete the set. Obligatory hour record news, the latest competitor is Rumen van Hoogt of Sporza TV, the station from which all your pirate feeds originate. I kind of wonder what Chris Boardman thinks of all this. How do you think the new record compares to your old classic stuff? Oh, come on, Mikey. You know as well as I do, the record's crap. No wonder former world time trial champion Tony Martin is ambiguous about his plans for the mark. If my understanding of market economics is correct, he probably won't make an effort at it until he's run out of things to win on the road. MTN Quebec's marvelous off-season media work continues, with team director Brian Smith saying he'd love to get real-time rider data out to fans if only the UCI would let him. I'm pretty sure HRM manufacturer Polar put out live heart rate data at the 2005 tour, but I'll come back to this later. An interview with MTN Quebec's Gerard Kjolik, meanwhile, reminded me that tour wildcards could come out as early as January, because God forbid actual bike racing performance have anything to do with being invited to the sport's biggest event. Consider FIFA's selection process almost certainly corrupt. IOC host city selection, definitely corrupt. Or at least it was until the events became too top-heavy for any non-corrupt nation to hold. Tour de France team selection. I mean, come on, what do you think? But hey, I will credit the Tour de France with being at least slightly more image aware than those other two. It's hard to imagine the entire nation of Kazakhstan, which by the way is home to one of the two remaining finalists for the 2022 Winter Games, being able to write a check big enough to get Astana into the Tour de France next season, that is, if the UCI revokes their World Tour license. I mean, after a fourth positive test, the UCI pretty much has to, right? Or is that party line of people having to be stupid to dope and the Aglinski brothers and the Continental team being totally unrelated to the rest of the squad, really gonna hold up. I mean, I guess I have to give Astana some credit for making the Continental team look like a crazy, unrelated offshoot. Just check out the Twitter account of their team doctor. I mean, I can't verify if the account is real or not, but the picture definitely looks like the same guy. Anyway, if the UCI, the same entity that has apparently banished live broadcasting of rider data, can not also revoke the world tour license of a team that has a fairly unprecedented number of positives, what kind of message is that going to send? Don't buy drugs. Become a pop star and they give you them for free. I'm Cosmo Catalano, and that was The Week in Bike. Boop.